Derek Miller, who's the president of the Illini Secular Student Alliance. Uh, uh, he was born and raised in the Chicago suburbs, uh, where he spends most of his days in a dark room eating Cheetos and playing video games. In his spare time, he studies political science at the University of Illinois. Please join me in welcoming Derek. All right, let's get started here. Morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Derek, and first and foremost, let me uh, thank you for getting up so early and, and coming out to see me. Before I uh, before I get started, I really want to plug my good friend Rebecca Tippins. She'll be in this room right after me talking about how to put together a lending library for your organization. It's a fantastic presentation, so be sure to stick around after I'm done talking. Anyway, I'm the incoming president of the Illini Secular Student Alliance, but in the past year I served as outreach chair for ISA, and I spent more time working with religious people and doing community service projects than I ever thought that I would. And by all accounts, and from everything I read, non-religious student groups do incredible community service all the time. And given the extremely high standard of excellence that we've set for ourselves and that the community sets for us, I was especially humbled that ISA was presented with the award for best service on Friday. In light of that, I want to talk about our year of service in review. But first, let me explain one of the many reasons why I think it's so important to engage in community service. And that is, as atheists in America, we face a problem in the remarkably strong feeling that many people have against atheists, even though they may not knowingly have ever met one in real life. I'm not going to bore you with the same old statistics that you already know, but suffice it to say that we are one of the least liked and least trusted minority groups in the United States. And I would say that it's behavior on the internet that's in part contributing to this problem. Anybody here on Reddit? <laughs> All right, good. That makes my job easier. <laughs> this is the overarching pattern I'm seeing lately. Someone posts an image like, like this one, atheism, for those who grew out of the imaginary friend stage. Uh, it's something that's snarky, has a little bit of attitude. It's supposed to be funny, but it's not really. It's, it's not particularly insightful either. It's not good content, but it's something people wish they could say in real life, uh, but they wouldn't actually do without anonymity. And just to prove how easy this is to do, I did this yesterday. Did anybody see this post on Our Atheism yesterday? Yeah, that was me. This isn't, that's not a real quote. That didn't happen. Okay? <laughs> it didn't happen. This, this guy, this cardinal, died like 10 years before Galileo was even put on trial. And whoever made this image, it wasn't me. I just reposted it. They didn't even spell Galileo's name right. But it was on the front page all day. All day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so it, it, got, it got onto the front page because the quote cuts deep into one of the central tenets of Christianity without requiring a lot of serious thought or effort. And eventually, the truth about this obviously falsified image came to light in the comments section. It's now the top comment on that thread. But prior to that, um, the top comment was what you was exactly what you expected to be, which is someone pointing out that this cardinal statement that to assert the earth revolves around the sun is as erroneous as to claim that Jesus was not born of a virgin is technically, albeit unknowingly for him, correct. These kind of posts have always been bad, but they haven't been a big deal before. Now that, now that our atheism shows up on the front page, every time the subreddit is mentioned anywhere, there's the obligatory, our atheism is a circle jerk, circle jerk. <laughs> the perfect example of this is a subreddit called our circle broke. Under the model, it's not us, it's you, this subreddit is dedicated entirely to pointing out where the Reddit hive mind gets most intense. Ironically, this puts our circle broke near the top of the list as far as Reddit circle jerks go. <laughs> as you can see, they have a weekly mega thread where they all get together to agree about how users on our atheism just sit around and agree with each other. <laughs> hmm. And as you might imagine, this has given way to a circle jerk where people complain about how the anti our atheism circle jerk is a circle jerk, leaving us like three levels of meta circle jerk away from any kind of meaningful discussion. So the first thing I want to talk about is how these kind of hive minds form in the first place and what the implications are then for atheists in broader American society. And I would argue that it all comes down to confirmation bias. Everyone, everyone has a tendency 
towards consuming information that they agree with. If you take your own information consumption seriously, you probably go out of your way to read things that you know you will likely disagree with. Unfortunately, almost nobody else does this. And in the case of our atheism, people get on, they get their jimmies rustled a couple times, and they'll unsubscribe. Oftentimes never seeing good things that happen in the community, like the support that it provides for people in, in tricky situations like Damon Fowler or Jessica Alquist, or the numerous fundraising efforts that have taken place. And now that large web institutions like Google and Facebook have unprecedented access to your private data, they're doing this for you. They're starting to filter your information for you, and it's becoming so bad that it will soon literally be a reality that a fundamentalist Christian could Google creationism and get results on not what is true, but what they would like to think is true. People are being placed inside impenetrable bubbles of confirmation bias without even consciously realizing that it's occurring. What really sets Reddit apart from other places is the upvote downvote system. Official Reddit discourages members from using from equating it with a like slash dislike feature, but that's actually how it's used. When Reddit users encounter things they disagree with or disapprove of, they downvote. And if users downvote, they can bury dissenting opinions to such a degree that no one will ever read them. We're gonna watch the rest of this because it's cool. <laughs> The smirk at the end is my favorite. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that Reddit has an enormous user base, with tens of millions of unique visitors a day. Our atheism alone has nearly a million subscribers. If this, this is a screenshot from the, the Reddit blog in December of 2011, where they first had two billion page views in a month. And as you can see, their Reddit traffic has more than doubled in less than a year. It's only getting bigger. So. The, the kind of posts that are upvoted or downvoted change entirely on the kind of users that are online. And that varies by things like the day of the week or the time of the day. It makes no sense to generalize about any particular subreddit, I shouldn't say any, but most of the larger subreddits, uh, or to say that Reddit as a whole is sexist or racist or whatever, because the, re the website is only an amalgam of the users that are online at any given time. Take this for example. Okay, so let this sink in for a minute. Just look at this, and how do these pictures make you feel? I actually want to know. Tell me. Somebody. What do you think of that? <laughs> okay, so if you, if you went to a, a website where these kind of images were regularly posted, would you ever go back? Nah. No? Well, I hate to break it to you, but this is just, this is just my uncle on Facebook. That's the kind of stuff he posts. Don't worry, we're not blood related, so. <laughs> uh, but when I asked you just a second ago, we had a healthy portion of you say so you'd rather never go on Facebook again than to, to see those images. Now we know really you'd just block him or delete him or never friend him in the first place, which is a much better idea. Uh, but this brings me to my larger point, is that in the same way this guy I'll get his face off soon. Uh, in the same way this guy is never going to change your mind about politics with his picture of Obama dressed up in a turban, you're not going to change his mind about religion with your picture about imaginary friends. Even if it was never your, my, even if it was never your goal to deconvert anybody or to change anybody's mind, the kind of content has a tangible effect on the way people think about atheists. So the question is, how to go from most Americans think of us now on the left to how we actually are on the right? Perfectly ordinary, kind, thinking, feeling human beings. Now it goes without saying that you should serve your community simply because it is right and because it is just. By showing your community through your actions that you identify with that essential value, you'll start to break through those barriers that people have in their minds about what an atheist is. And that's exactly what our goal has been in the past year. One of the best ways to do this is working with the Red Cross. Their efforts in providing support for disaster relief are recognized worldwide as indisputably valuable. Conveniently, working with them to put together a blood drive is the easiest thing to put together. It was the easiest thing I had to do. This text on, on here, this first bullet point, that's word for word off of their website, off of this big URL right here. If you've never done a blood drive, go to this URL because they have regional coordinators that make it a very simple, easy process. You do these three or four things, and they bring the tables, the snacks, the personnel, all their equipment, and 
all you need to do is have enough people to promote the event beforehand and have enough people show up. Even if you don't think you can get that many people to donate, um, it's important to know that every one of every one individual donation can actually save as many as three lives. So every drop really does matter, and every person you can get in the door will really help. Another thing we did in the past year was this uh, Hot Dogs for Orphans fundraiser. You, you might have heard of this already. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. Uh, I was reading The Friendly Atheist about a year ago, and Hamant had a post about um, a bunch of Catholic adoption agencies that were shutting down because civil unions were legalized in the state of Illinois. And I thought it was outrageous that these places that were supposed to be caring for children would rather shut down than give them to loving and qualified same-sex couples. So we decided to get out and do something about it. Uh, we spent a weekend right in the middle of the campus bar scene selling hot dogs to drunk people and raised a couple hundred bucks. It was a lot of fun. Um, but what people don't know is that we almost died like several times doing this. As you imagine, being atheists out and, and talking to drunk people might not be the best idea. And I, now I watch my fair share of King of the Hill, and I have an appreciation for the potential dangers of propane. <laughs> Yeah, so we had, we had one guy, like, talking on his phone behind us back there and, like, smoking a cigarette, and he seemed like he was okay until, like, he comes sliding and whams right into the side of our table, knocks over the grill, knocks over the propane tank. We, we just kind of scrambled to get everything together and left. And the next day, we came back, and this guy was right on the sidewalk by the corner, you can see there, and he's joking around with his friends about how he wants to go back to the bar and so he starts sprinting back in the bar direction and sprints directly into the grill and the propane tank and knocks that over again and so I mean it's absolutely a travesty and then we had some communication issues too um, we, you know we were just saying hot dogs for orphans but D Dan can you give him your pitch um, now, for some reason, thanks to Dan's accent, people thought he was saying hot dogs for dolphins. <laughs> so the first night we were out there, we had people like, hot dogs for dolphins? That doesn't make any sense. And then the second night we were out there, like a guy walks by, I say, hey, you want to buy a hot dog? He says, no, I don't like dolphins. <laughs> and, and all of this aside, we didn't have any of the proper permits or licensing to do anything like this. Um, looking back, I'm really glad that we did it, but would I necessarily recommend it to you? No. <laughs> That's not to say you shouldn't be willing to take risks and try new things. Don't worry about the absolute worst case scenario, because it probably won't happen. As you can see, I'm not dead right now, and neither is most of ISA. <laughs> Another really cool thing we did was helping out at our local Catholic worker house. Unlike many aspects of Catholic orthodoxy, the Catholic worker movement was started by a radical communist uh, called Dorothy Day. And in her lifetime, she defied church orthodoxy uh, by pushing her radical political ideology, believing strongly in the need for Christians to act as Christ would by opening their houses up to the less fortunate. Uh, to this day, Catholic worker houses across the United States offer food and shelter to the homeless. And since homelessness and unemployment are atrocious in Urbana-Champaign, where we come from, and that's actually the case on a lot of college campuses, it seemed particularly appropriate that we would go and help out. Here we are standing beside, uh, while we're digging a, a garden for some organic vegetables, but this was right before we left, and we spent all day before that inside the house making the beds, cleaning the sink, cleaning the microwave, degreasing the oven, rearranging their library. They have all sorts of work that needs to be done, and it was hard work, but we left the place with a line of homeless people out the door waiting for dinner, and I'm kicking myself for not getting a picture of that. But it, it was really rewarding, and it was an afternoon well spent in my book. My absolute favorite event from the past year, though, was what we called the Giving Tree. For this one, we at ISA got together with our local Interfaith and Action chapter and the, big, and the biggest Catholic church on campus. The church had a list of its members who had fallen on hard times, and uh, it, had, it had the ages of the children and their interests. There was three girls and, and one little boy. Two of the older girls liked art supplies. Uh, the, the youngest girl loved Pokemon. The other little boy loved Pokemon and like cars. So we were psyched to go and go to the local Walmart, buy a bunch of Pokemon, buy a bunch of art supplies. We took them, wrapped them up, and brought them right over to the family ourselves. So how many of you celebrated Christmas when you were younger, even if you were never in a household that was particularly religious? 
Do you remember the joy that you felt coming downstairs to open presents on Christmas morning? These, these were happy times. And I've often heard adults talk about uh, how great it is to watch kids come down on Christmas morning and see the looks in their eyes and see them open up these presents. And I could never really appreciate this until this moment when I saw these kids opening the presents that we pitched in to get them themselves. We did a lot of really rewarding things over the past year, but this right here is what makes it worthwhile to me. Am I concerned that I was so involved in supporting a Christian holiday? No. Because I made these kids feel good at a time of the year that was special to them. And that's what I think really matters. And for that matter, I'm never going to forget about this family. And they're probably not going to forget about me. So the next time those parents or those kids hear something sneer the word atheist, they're not going to think about some asshole trolling around on the internet. They're going to think about the guys who went out of the way to make the holidays special when their family hit hard times. I can't recommend this event too strongly. Seriously, I want to do this again forever, but the problem is there's a large initial startup effort for this kind of event, uh, larger than there were for the others. This isn't the kind of thing where you can show up somewhere and have an event, just have work to do already. You can't very well go door to door saying, hey, can I help you with your Christmas shopping? Uh, this is the result of months of cooperation and organization with religious groups on campus. If you can't find a church or a religious organization that's already doing something like this, it could be really hard to talk them into doing this. So if you'll allow me, I'd like to make a small interjection here to give you a, a bit of practical advice on the subject. In our case, we just happened to have the perfect storm of convenient connections, but that's not to say it was an accident. It was really a matter of good timing. In fact, we had aggressive policies at U of I with regard to networking with other religious groups. We have this thing called Quad Day. Do you, do you have this where all of your registered student organizations go out and you're all around and you're probably in the religious section even though you're like, no, um, but there's no better place to put you so it's whatever. Well, you know what? Just embrace it. Go around, talk to every other religious organization and get some contact information. And in the next couple days, follow up immediately. Throw out some ideas for events. Take the initiative. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or formal. It can be as simple as, let's have a pizza party. Let's play Settlers of Catan. You know? So then, once you've done that and your group has gotten together once, it's going to be a lot better to get together to do something else, do something bigger. You can move on from there. You can always improve from there. And always keep in touch. You don't want to get together with one of these groups, have a great time, and then never have the fruits of your effort really come to anything. So just always keep in touch. Try to have a, a, a standing weekly meeting with maybe one officer from another group and one of your officers just to keep in touch and see if there are any events that you can work on together. So back to the internet. <laughs> Once you've done all this service work, the next step is to use it to change internet content for the better. Among the few bloggers who can break past the slew of image posts on our atheism is Himat Mehta. I haven't talked to him at all about this talk, but in my experience, it's pretty clear that he has a big soft spot for service projects. And I'm sure he's not the only one. Assuming you've taken pictures of your event, which you should always, always, always do, try to uh, bring it to attention of popular bloggers by making a blog post of your own, linking it to them. Or if you don't have a blog, you should start one right away, but you could email one to one of these popular bloggers, and you just might get a plug. And if your picture turns out particularly well, you can try making a catchy title and submitting it to Our Atheism yourself. So, in conclusion, thanks to our friend Confirmation Bias, internet communities, and Reddit in particular, are hardwired to mini minimize dissent from the norm. This makes it really difficult for those who are active in the secular community to discuss the intellectual nuance of our issues. And since religious people tend to browse the internet in precisely the same way, perhaps more so, it's damn near impossible to change their mind based on anything they read online. This is why it's important to engage in service projects in your local community. And at the very least, you will create lasting memories for yourself and the people you help. And that's what really matters. If you can use it to change the way people think and use the internet, all the better. I wanted to leave some time for questions, so that's all I have for you. And remember to stick around for Rebecca Tippins. Thank you. Yeah. Like, excuse me. What do you think about like 
creating a secular holiday beside Christmas and like you know help those children under that name instead of Christmas? Um, it's an interesting thought. I think Christmas just works in this case because we were working with a church. It helps. Uh, you know, the holidays are such a special time and the, and the kids are just raised religious. So the year is special to them already and I'm just concerned about making it work for them. I'm not trying to create a new holiday. I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, I'd like to point out, it's codified under U.S. law as a secular holiday anyway. And it's such a cultural phenomenon. It's not really, you can't even really consider it a religious holiday anymore. Well, that's a much better answer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one thing we've been really, really strong on in ISA is even if you don't agree on things, you should still work with people and you should never censor yourself. Never censor yourself. Always say exactly what you want. You can have debate, you can have critical thought and discussion without being offensive and without being rude. And that's what we try to do is we're us, we're going to say what we want, we're going to do what we want but we want to help and we have a mutual goal here, so let's work at it. Well, throughout the year, yeah, we worked with a lot of different religious groups on campus, like the MSA and Yeah, I mean, we, we were all over the place with all sorts of groups that wouldn't agree with each other anyway. So. Uh, I guess I'm sorry, if, I, if I may follow up, I mean like people within your own uh, affiliate group. Like yeah, I just, yeah, I just try to, I explain it to them. Okay. That's what I tell them. So that you don't have to censor yourself, and we would never expect you to. And if I just want, can I add something quickly? We try to do a lot of different things, so people don't necessarily have to like every single thing we do, but we try to make it so there's at least something that they'll like that'll want to keep them coming. You know. Any other questions? Thank okay, you. great. Thank you.